Oh, hello, I... I didn't see you there. Or you. What's that? A global pandemic? Well, making a short film wasn't easy before, but I'm sure we can figure something out. No! Not like that! Okay, a quick disclaimer before you begin. Filmmaking has always been difficult, but due to the outbreak of COVID-19, I found it exponentially harder to find actors, locations, and crew to create content with. Hence why I'm making the only type of video I can do entirely by myself right now. To add to this hindrance on collaboration, the safety measures that go into filmmaking have also risen as social distancing and sanitization now have to be taken into account to keep everyone safe. Making a movie often feels like the most important thing in the world when you're deep in the process, but it's not worth risking the health and safety of you or those around you. It's important to keep in mind the current state of the public health crisis when writing and shooting your next short film and to follow social and government regulations to keep everyone safe. The following video takes you through the process of shooting two short films that I've created over the past six months in vastly different states of the pandemic. Everyone's situation is different, but maybe the process of creating one of these two shorts could help you. Flashback to June of 2020. I was home from school for the summer. Everything was shut down due to coronavirus, and in a Hail Mary attempt to alleviate boredom, I decided, hey, I should make a short film. But I knew that in order to create something producible, I had to be smart about it. So let's talk about generating ideas and giving yourself rules. It might seem counterintuitive to start with constraints when generating ideas, but if you want to be a filmmaker, then you need to be able to produce what you write. Again, we're living in a global pandemic, so now might not be the best time to shoot that action-packed duel or crowded diner getaway, but you can still be creative. When trying to generate ideas for the film I wanted to make over the summer, I gave myself a list of rules to follow. Due to COVID, sets have to be kept small. I tried to limit myself to writing a short film that could be produced with a maximum of 10 cast and crew members on the set at the same time. Now is probably not the best time to try to shoot that big party scene. If you already have it, then you don't have to go find it. There's nothing worse than finishing a project only to realize that you don't have the resources to pull it off. Try taking the everyday locations and people from your life that may seem mundane to you, but Reimagine them from the perspective of someone that's never seen them before. Use the people and locations around you to inspire the plot of your film, but then fill it with the details and emotions from your own life. Only in the specific do we feel the general, so try to give your characters very unique and identifiable traits and behaviors. And if you can't think of any, then steal some from your own life. As a little kid, I always struggled with body confidence and dieting and have vivid memories of sneaking out to the local 7-Eleven to buy candy before my mom got home from work. So I decided to create a story around that and wrote Shortcake. A film about a mom imposing a strict diet on her son, forcing him on a quest for his favorite strawberry shortcake ice cream bars. The script had a limited cast of mostly kids that I knew I could cast my friends as, and a limited number of locations consisting mainly of home interiors and side streets. The largest hurdles in this script were to find an actress to play Peter's mom and to get a drugstore location that we could actually shoot in. I knew these would be the most difficult things to track down, so we got to work as soon as possible to figure out how we were going to pull them off. Pre-production is one of the most important parts of making a film, especially in a global pandemic, and is often what sets aside amateur filmmakers from professionals. You've written that awesome car chase scene, but pre-production is when you actually have to figure out how you're going to pull it off. The most important things when it comes to pre-production for me are organization and collaboration. I like to put all of the material surrounding the film in one easy to find place for the cast and crew. The method of organization is always changing, but as of now, I'm really liking using Google Docs because it's neat, easy to use, and free. For each new project, I create a shared Google Drive and fill it with subfolders for everything from the latest draft of the script, location photos, inspiration for the film, and cast and crew information. This last one is super important and helpful when trying to schedule 
where everyone needs to be and when. Sometimes I create a PowerPoint pitch presentation to convey the tone and mood of the piece to potential collaborators. This process is all about honing in on your vision, communicating that vision to others, and gathering the necessary materials to make it happen. Once I have a solid feel for what I'm trying to say with the film and all of the locations locked, I move on to overheads of each scene. There are a million ways to plan out your days, whether it be through applications like Shotlister or Movie Magic or traditional storyboards, but I found the way that works best for me is using overheads. And for that, I use graph paper and a pen. Let's break it down. Okay, so once I have the script ready to go, I have all my locations locked in, um, I go through the script scene by scene and do a little overhead map of what I want each scene to look like in terms of the actor's blocking position um, and also where the camera is gonna be set um, and all the different angles I know I need to get to cover the scene, to tell the story and to give me the most options and flexibility in editing. For the sake of time, um, we'll just do one quick scene, this little section um, of our story. Um, and this scene kind of comes when our protagonist, Peter, has left his ordinary world state of being at home and kind of being forced to exercise and eat healthy. And he's decided to go against his mom's wishes and sneak out of the house to go get these strawberry shortcake ice cream bars, which are his favorite. In this scene, I really want to create a sense of movement and energy. If you look um, even just uh, how it's written on the page, there's a lot of words like races um, and then rushes. And so I know that when I'm blocking and shooting this scene, uh, I want there to be a lot of movement, but not uncontrolled movement. Cause I feel like at this point in this story, uh, we're, we're in Peter's point of view and and he has control over his surroundings. We have our protagonist, Peter, and then we also have Kara and Alex, who are kind of the two bullies that don't have a huge role in this scene, but definitely come back to play a larger part later on in the story. And so this seems important in establishing them as characters that you know Peter might have a little bit of a run-in with later on. Once I feel like I have a good understanding of the scene itself, what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll look at the location that we're gonna be shooting in and see how it relates to the script. There's a line, he searches the, the parking lot um, and sees uh, a group of teens that are far away, but if you look at our location here, um, we searched all around for different grocery stores and convenience stores in, in, in my area that would let us film and Surprise, surprise, due to COVID and everything going on and also just having no money to really give anyone, uh, there wasn't a ton of options out there, but we found this great family-owned business that we kind of had some friends of friends that worked there and were able to shoot outside for a couple hours and, and shoot inside very briefly for just a few minutes. If you look at the location, uh, there's not a parking lot with the script calls for, but I did notice that there was this kind of interesting bench here. And so I thought, okay, what if, uh, you know, Alex and Kara were kind of on the bench and I imagine them as a little bit of like a flirty couple and so I was like okay what if they're flirting on the bench and then you know this is such a interesting kind of angle with that great sign that says Alpine imported foods I think it'd be fun to play with that um, a lot of space out in front and so it just felt natural kind of the left to right movement in the frame of uh, Peter biking in right here um, and stopping his bike and then if he looks over right on the bench there's uh, where Kara and Alex are a great moment for eye contact and then you can kind of run in the store. And so I kind of got, you know, a sense of how I want the scene to, to flow and play out. Um, and then once I have that down, I'll actually, I'll move on to um, the boards themselves. My general rule for uh, my <laughs> overheads, uh, because I'm not the best artist and I don't want to waste time trying to make them look so pretty is that you know, if someone were to just look at it, they might not quite understand it, but if I were to look at it, I would always understand it. And now if I were to look at it next to someone, I could easily explain, you know, what I was trying to, to say with, with this drawing. So usually what I do first, again, um, doesn't have to be perfect, uh, is just kind of get an overview of um, the location itself on the paper. And I don't have the best angle right now to draw, so I'm doing my best. And so we can see that's kind of the storefront and then it goes back a little bit, and I know that um, from this shot, we have a little bit, and then there's kind of the street in front, and then we have a bench here, doorway here, of an entrance, um, and that kind of gives me just, just a quick idea of uh, the geography of the scene. Um, and then what I'll usually do is use uh, a different color for each character. We'll make Peter this kind of teal color. I know that he's gonna be biking in from off screen over here, um, and so I'll put his like little starting point there and then I'll just draw a little dotted line of him coming in through here. And then I know he's gonna dismount his bike right there. 
make eye contact with Karen Alex right here and then run into the store um, like so. And then we'll also kind of do Alex and Kara who don't have that much blocking in the scene, which is kind of nice. Um, but just put them on the bench. And normally I'd make a little key um, that's kind of coded with, you know, this color means this person. Uh, so we kind of get this little overview of what the scene looks like at a glance. Again, it's not that pretty, but I can look down at this and be like, okay, here's my plan. Because three days before you can be like, shoot this shot at this time. The lighting's gonna be great then. Everyone's gonna show up. But on the day when you're actually shooting, everything always goes wrong as it always does. So it's nice to be able to have, you know, just a piece of paper that you can look down and be like, okay, here's my plan. And again, that plan is always changing, but you can't change the plan if you don't have a, a plan in place already. So the next thing that I like to do is draw where I want the camera to be. First shot that I want to do is definitely one in this area because that's where that great uh, sign is um, right here. And so I want to get a fun, like low angle with that. And again, there's so much movement in this scene. Um, he's racing, he's rushing. And so I was thinking something with a dolly um, kind of just exaggerating the movement of the bike. And what I usually do, this is like an old like blueprint drawing thing. And I actually, I use the urinal as my little camera um, and I can kind of see, you know, what way it's supposed to be pointing. Um, there, and I know that's gonna be going this way. At higher levels and working with a really big crew um, and a lot of money, you probably don't want it to be something this minimalist, but if it's just you and a couple friends, low budget, I think this method works great. And so I'll usually put, you know, this is maybe our one, and then I'll put over here a little one. Probably like somewhere around like 24 millimeters. The next thing that I wanna do, an interesting like kind of white transition with this dolly, um, to another dolly shot over here. Um, that kind of dollies this way. Still on Peter, but then revealing kind of Alex and Kara in the foreground um, and having Peter in the background. I think that'd be kind of interesting. In order to make that transition, I was thinking of having a person. It would actually probably be one of our crew members. Just kind of walk in front of the camera, obscuring it so we can hide a cut on that transition there. So that's number two. And two, I'm just gonna, that's probably also gonna be 24 millimeter. Our next shots are definitely gonna be on that close moment of eye contact between Peter and Kara. And so I really wanna have a good, close, confrontational, tight shot of each of them. Kind of have this little stare down moment that sets up Kara stealing Peter's bike later on in the film. Camera here, and then the reverse of that angle here. This is probably gonna be three, four, and again, I'd probably kind of figure out exactly what the best shooting order is gonna be based on um, light and time and uh, what shots are the most important to get if we're gonna run out of time. But I would say three and four are probably each gonna be like 50 millimeters. And then always good to get is a wide. And I actually had an idea to get a wide from across the street uh, and have kind of all the cars going in the street uh, in the foreground of the image. Again, creating depth, creating space, movement and energy. And I put that on uh, probably 24 too. Wide's always good because it gives you something to, to cut away from. And if the other angles aren't really working and you need to kind of reset the frame, it's always good to kind of cut to that wide shot and have it in your back pocket. So that's my plan for this scene uh, going into shooting. It. Well, it's yours and mine. Let's make it brighter. On the day of, we managed to get all of these angles in time. Uh, it was a great crew. We worked really fast. You can see um, in our original shooting plan, we were going to cut from the wipe of the person. Uh, but in editing, it didn't really work. It felt a little forced. It didn't really seem like... There was a good reason for that transition to be there that time. It was a little more of like, a, oh, this is something cool than like something that really pushed the story forward. And so I decided to cut it. And luckily I had that wide shot to cut to because then if you see, we cut right from this first shot to the wide. And then what I actually ended up doing was just using the the natural wipe from two cars passing that was totally unplanned to create that sense of movement. But I think what it also does is it kind of works as, as a separation of the before and after of Peter realizing the presence of Kara. Having the wipe come in there really pushes the story forward. So that's just an example of one scene. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll do that for each scene in the story. <laughs> yeah, we're just demonstrating the jump. The gazelle. The gazelle. <laughs> 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 that would hurt. Come in. Come in.
As far as physical production goes, the only major COVID era change is an emphasis on safety. On the set of Shortcake, each location was sanitized before we began filming and everyone on the cast and crew wore masks and had their temperatures checked daily. Only when it came time to roll the camera did actors take their masks off in order to perform. And I think the most important thing when it comes to safety is that everyone involved is on the same page and agrees to the safety standards being set by the production. So there you have it. Easy, right? I mean, it's just Newly uh, confirmed cases of COVID-19 are surging across the U.S., hitting not only major cities, but small rural populations as well. More than 8.2 million Americans have tested positive for coronavirus since the start of the pandemic. Okay, so let's say that you live in a more highly populated area, or the state of the virus where you are has worsened, or you just don't feel comfortable being around people that you don't live with. Can you still make a short film? Yes. Recently, I again set out to make a short film in a global pandemic, but this time I was located in Los Angeles, and infection rates were at an all-time high, and... I no longer felt safe shooting a short film with even 10 people on set. So I decided to create something that took place entirely in my house, using only my roommates as actors. Again, I used the things around me as sources of inspiration, creating characters I knew my roommates could play, and letting unique aspects of our house like the cellar crawl space inspire the story. The resulting film Identity Theft follows a dysphoric burglar as he breaks into a house in search of not only valuables, but himself. When I felt like the script was in a good place, I again began to create overheads for each of the 24 scenes in the film. The nice part about shooting something where you live is that if you're ever not sure if a camera angle will work or how to block a particular section, you can always just go sit in that location and try out different ideas. 23 beta, take two. If I've learned anything from making this film, it's that who you make the film with is just as important as the film itself. I thought that the challenge of having to shoot something by myself with only a few friends to help would be so limiting, but instead it liberated me. Forcing myself not to focus on having the most production value or cinematic look freed up so much mental space to really focus on the story of the film and to have fun. Shooting this scrappy project made me fall in love with the process all over again as I'm constantly reminding my Myself, that it's not gear, money, or recognition that really matters. Filmmaking is all about a group of individuals coming together to create something greater than themselves. We're living in such a stressful and isolating time, and creating something with the people you live with, whether it be your family, friends, pets, or just by yourself, is a great way to take your mind off all the external stressors in life, and definitely something I would recommend everyone try. What else are you doing sitting at home?